Welcome back to AWE TV. My name is Mark Pizer, and with us is Stefan Grambert, the creative director with Secret Location. Stephen. Hi, Mark. Hi, thanks for joining us. Uh, you, you have a talk here at AWE focusing on uh, emerging narrative for VR. Yes. Um, so I work at Secret Location as creative director, and what we've been focusing on a lot is storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what we've always done. We, we focus on storytelling, and we focus on new technologies. So obviously, since 2013, uh, we've been working heavily in, in VR. And that emergent narrative aspect of it, for, for me, and it's something that's, that's close to my heart, is this idea that uh, we need to start getting the audience involved in the storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, not just in the consuming of the story, and that we need to redefine that relationship between audience and author. Okay, so kind of uh, like a choose your own adventure. Yeah, I would say that taking the choose your own adventure, but taking it to the next level. Rather than just having uh, an audience who can choose uh, predetermined or, or pre-authored stories, they actually have a hand in making those. So there's literally uh, no uh, pre-authored outcome. And the story is just sort of emergent in, in the actual telling of it. Okay, uh, that sounds like there's a lot of stuff you have to create for that. You have to, if you let them go down one path, there's a whole array of maybe assets to create. Where does the story go there? Right. And then you have to bring them back or let them continue going down that path. Right, and that's one of those things that I think that the emergent narrative can actually solve. Um, obviously there's a lot of technical challenges to it, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who are working on those technical challenges with machine learning and that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, but from the story aspect, I just think that it, it needs sort of like a, a redefinition, right? So rather than having to author those branches that, that, uh, that audience members can go down, yeah. what you do is you sort of, as an author, you set up themes and you set up um, sort of, uh, like a compass for okay. the audience, and then what the audience does is they help to tell that story. So rather than there being predetermined branches, it's sort of this uh, reverse funnel where there's an infinite number of possibilities that haven't been created yet, and the audience starts to, to choose what they want to do mm. just based on their interactions with the world, and then the, the, the world itself builds the story with them. And it, it, it adjusts to them? Basically, yeah. yeah. Based on, like you said, machine learning, the different things that right. are implemented in the, in so, the experience. And, and that just sort of needs that sort of dual approach of technology and creativity, where on the creative side, we need yeah. to start thinking about how do we tell a story yeah. where we don't actually tell a plot, for instance. Okay, because right? it can seem too canned. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, right now we have branching narratives uh, of, of various types. Uh, branch narrative gets, like you were saying, exponentially increasing in scope the mm -hmm. more complex your story gets. Uh, and those have been tackled through like tangent narratives where uh, there's a main plot and your branches are just optional okay. and don't really affect the main plot. And then there's an uh, elastic narrative where the uh, branches uh, branch off but then quickly fold back into the main plot. So all roads lead to Rome sort of thing. Sure, sure. I mean, this sounds really ambitious, but I, I think it's a great way uh, for people to experience VR and, and see what's special about VR and, and emerging technologies. Right. Uh, why did you guys choose to go uh, take this ambitious approach? Um, or you feel it was necessary? Well, for me, um, we've been working in VR for about three and a half years. Okay. And uh, if there's one lesson that we've really learned, it's that this, this sense of immersion and presence that everyone keeps talking about has a, a sort of a secondary side effect. Okay. And it's that when you put people into a place in VR, they begin to question their identity and their agency within that world. Meaning they want to they touch everything. If it doesn't work the way I expect it to, I, this is broken. Right, and the more realistic the, the world is, the more we demand that the agency is real as well. Okay. So if I'm in a, in a, a virtual space and I, I can put my hand through this table, sure. then all of a sudden that reality is broken. I'm expecting this table to behave like any other table. Right, and that's the rule that we set. I ex expect that rule to apply right. to this, the physics, knocking off the table. Exactly, and the same thing can be said for story. If I can't affect a story, then all of a sudden it, it feels canned, it feels uh, restrictive, and mm. doesn't feel real. Yeah, yeah. Like in, in VR worlds, I just I want to touch. I want to try everything and yeah. see what I can touch. I can't, you know. But. Yeah. You sort of test your limits, right? Which is something that you do in the real world as well. Like you test. We test my limits, but yeah. also to test see, to see how solid this experience is. Right. Right. See, where should I or shouldn't I go? Um, after making these stuff, the this types of experiences, I, I'm, I bet you cannot. Uh, experience your own uh, a VR experience the same way, again, because you're trying to uh, re-engineer what the designer had in, in mind, right? 
Yeah, it gets yeah. difficult. Like, uh, I mean, we're we're ways away from doing some sort of real real emergent narrative, but I'm I'm working on ways of testing portions of it. Okay. So, for instance, uh, when I talk to uh, scriptwriters, they they get very uh, concerned about this idea of, of how do you how do you write a script if there's no there's no plot there's no script. Mm. What are um, the concerns? Well, it, it's the idea that you're giving all the power to the the audience okay. and you're taking it away from the author, so you're not going to get a good story. Is, is the concern mm -hmm. right? Um, it's like a sandbox mode in a game. People play the game and they enjoy doing these activities, but there's no real story there. Sure. Uh, but what I always pull back to is this this background I have in, in improv theater where uh, we use structure to sort of help guide uh, the other actors on stage to tell a story. Mm. So five act structure is one. Uh, there's a, a French uh, philosopher by the name of Georges Polti who coined the 36 uh, dramatic situations. Okay. So he basically categorized every single uh, dramatic situation in literature okay. and could only find 36 of them. And the weird thing is when you read them, it reads a lot like tags, like you would find on the internet. Okay. So hey, give me an example of a couple. So for instance, there's one that I use in my presentation called The Rivalry of Kin. Okay. And that's one of the dramatic situations, and it's written as the object of desire chooses the preferred kinsman over the rejected kinsman. Okay. And that's enough to kind of develop this right. sort of sandbox experience for someone in VR. Sure. And that, that could be a... Um, a love triangle, that could be a political situation. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of different, like kinsman doesn't necessarily have to be an actual person, right? Object sure. of desire doesn't have to be a person or an object. I see, I see. Okay. But if you ascribe those as, as tags to things in an environment and then allow the audience to interact with them and then decide what that story is, then all of a sudden you're creating a system mm -hmm. where the story doesn't exist until the audience or the players start to interact start with Start to it. interact. Cool. And then in your talk, uh, what do you want people to, exp you know, to expect? What do you want them to, to walk away with from your talk? So, uh, I, I admittedly am not the most technically minded person. Uh -huh. I, have a, a, I have more of an art background, but I also have been heavily involved in interaction, mm. uh, per se. So, whereas I can't help with the machine learning side of it, um, I, can, I can start talking about the storytelling side of it. And I think what I want people to walk away from uh, the talk with is this idea that story doesn't have to be what we've always expected it to be. And sure. we can start thinking about it in a way that is, is, is at a higher level, is more of, a, of a, a collection of themes and signposts for people rather than, than plot and character and, and things that are prescribed rather than created together as a, as a collective. Yeah, and in that way, the, the user feels that they, they are affecting this and, and they're affecting what you're providing to them. Right. So they, they're kind of, they have that more, they have the agency. Agency, emerging. exactly. Yeah. And that agency that the, they, the, the user has as a, as a character can then be used to create more dramatic agency and help sure. that story have more of an emotional impact. Cool, very cool. Well, I mean, content for VR is a huge thing because we have uh, good enough hardware um, and we'll see more revs of it. PlayStation hasn't put theirs out mm -hmm. yet. Um, but it seems like content is what's missing. Right. I mean, where do you see content going in the next year? Will we in see the next year? better stories, more bite-sized, longer versions of one experience? I think the, 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 the variable that, uh, at least at Secret Location, we're all waiting to see is what's going to happen with, uh, with VR and gaming. Okay. So we all know that, that, that gaming is a very immersive uh, media. It had been before VR, it was one of the, the really uh, like interactive, immersive medias right. that we had. Um, and now that VR is around, gaming seems to be a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. But we want to see what is going to happen, like you said, with, with the PlayStation VR and how that's going to be taking up. Uh, and as well, that's going to help determine how, how long we should be making our experiences. And again, that, that's like a fleeting definition, right? Um, if we say now two minutes, two minutes is tops what we want it for people to spend in VR, and then other people try a 10 minute experience. Yeah then you're going to say, well, no, we've tried 10 minutes and, and it works. So, so we're just going to push in the, right. raise in the bar. Right. And I think that uh, all those rules, all those sort of like best practices that people have been coming up with, uh, they're going to constantly be shifting. So okay. I think we're going to see a lot of experimentation in the content. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see a lot of people starting to go with more long form content. Uh, and I think at that point, we're going to be pushing the limits of how comfortable it is to wear a, 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 a headset yeah. for, uh, for a movie for an hour and a half. Right. 
Like, right. does your face get sweaty? Do you want to take it off? I mean, we have our individual circadian rhythm where, like, you know, movies right. are two hours max for a good reason yeah. because we just kind of, like, we get tired, we get bored, or, like, we want to move on to something right. else just natural. And I, I feel that the, the more time you spend in the VR, in VR, the more comfortable you become with it. Okay. Um, I mean, we've been working in it for so long, uh, I can do a full day of, of testing of our yeah. product, and, and I'll be in and out of VR for five hours, and I'll be fine. Okay. But then on another day, I'll be in for three, and I'll just I'll need to get out and get some yeah. sunshine. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I look forward to hearing more about Secret Location. Great. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. This is AWE TV. With us was Stefan Lambert, Creative Director with uh, Secret Location. Thanks.